welcome to the gamers table. It is Monday, and we are reviewing Loch Ness. Loch Ness. It's a great family game. There's a lot of deduction trying to figure out what the other people uh, played for movement cards. For decades, reporters from around the world have been on the hunt for the Loch Ness monster. But lately, reports of sightings of Nessie have been increasing. Such reports naturally have drawn such reporters as the attractive Belinda Viewing from New York, the half-Belgian Claude McMurrer, the clever Filosa Sharp, as well as her Londoner competitor Jack Nesty, and even Niles, the Blitzen from Denmark to the Loch. Equipped with the most modern equipment and techniques, these daring reporters have traveled to Scotland in order to capture the elusive Nessie on film for their newspapers. But the five will experience some surprises! First surprise, this is not nearly the kiddie game we thought it was going to be. It's actually oh. quite enjoyable. Yeah, it's a good game. It's a good family game. It's a decent game even for experienced players, you know, uh, play more advanced games. You're collecting three pic... Well, a picture of Nessie. You want to get as many pictures of Nessie as possible. The picture of Nessie is broken up into three different cards. The head, the middle section, and her tail. And the uh, person with, uh, at the end of the game, with the most full sets of Nessie plus... Uh, there's these bonus uh, points for each individual card you have after that that's, uh, what, different? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to get even more bonus points, and whoever has the and highest... And also the victory points track. And the, the victory points track as well uh, counts towards that, too. And on the game board here, you've got a number of camera locations. I got it here. Okay, might as well set that can down over there. I'm still <laughs> hanging around. But... Yeah, you should have set it down earlier. Yeah. I had a drink in my hand there. Um, you've got a bunch of camera locations around the lock. You'll be placing your cameras around there and hoping to catch those snapshots of Nessie. If you happen to be right opposite where Nessie shows up, you will get a photo card or two or whatever. And good. if you happen to be on that little section of land where happy, uh, where happy, where <laughs> Nessie shows up, then uh, you'll you will get your camera points. you'll score your camera points. And you've got what three different cameras, possibly more. But yeah, three to start. You can possibly get more. And there's a number of different uh, options to go to uh, that each person will get a, uh, pick from before the round starts. There's lots of ways to mitigate uh, the luck factor, the unknown factor, by being able to move mess Nessie up one space with the one, or or if you're really low on the cards in your hand for movement, you could choose the one where you use the uh, seven movement cards, which would make it harder for people to guess where Unless you could go. This is an extra card. It's playing for the advanced players. Um, I would all not the suggest time. not to play. All the time. <laughs> yeah, play that. That one, yeah. So it's the, ho it's the hotel with, that allows you to draw your cards back up in your hand. There's the bagpipes that allow you to move. If Nessie is in front of you, but not directly in front of you, you're made move her forward one space to get yeah. her in front of you. Yeah, the land section. The pub gives you an extra camera that you can place only for that turn. Then at the end, you have to replace it. The Photoshop allows you to score your three camera as a nine camera, if it happens to be in the right spot. That's for the points there, yeah. The castle allows you to, after everyone has finished placing all their cameras, place one in the third position that otherwise is never used. The distiller allows you to pick up a different deck of cards. This deck. Than your regular hand. And the church allows you to take a look at what somebody else has played. Chris, would you describe the cards then? Well, these are the cards that you get to play on your turn. Uh, this is the first player, the first three players in this game will place a card between one to five secretly, at which point you count from where Nessie is, that many spaces, and that's where Nessie moves to. So at the start of the round, people pick cards. Then people, tr they'll have the information they put down. If they took the church, they'll know what somebody else put down. And plus, all the cards that have been used stay up face up until they get to replenish their hand with the hotel or something. Or they choose the distiller instead and don't yeah. use yeah. their hand of cards. So it's a definitely a bit of guesswork, but you can... Uh... It's like educated guesswork. You get to see what uh, someone else has already played earlier on a previous turn, what numbers they might have left in their hand. And uh, if somebody has taken, uh, say, what, the pub, the extra five camera, you can see where they've placed it and you can kind of guess, well, they might have some information already where Nessie's going to end up. So you might want to place in that same general area that they put their extra camera down. Loch Ness is a lot more engaging, a lot more involved than he had originally thought when he looked at the box. It seems like it's a game for younger kids, but it really has a lot more to it than that. 
Yeah, the frustrating thing about this game sometimes is you know where Nessie's going to go, but there's already cameras there from the previous round. So now you got to try to lure them away. Or, okay, come on. Move your camera out of that spot. Move your camera out of that spot. And as soon as they do, boop, grab that spot. It's like, ha ha, sucker. You get, <laughs> you get the option of leaving your cameras where they are too, and that can totally mess uh, the players up too. You want to get in that area and, oh, Everybody just leaving their cameras there. It's like, oh, great. I lost out on that one again. You know, two turns in a row. I didn't get there the first time, and now I can't get there again because they all left the spots closed. So the victory track actually um, performs two functions. For one, it keeps track of how many victory points you've got. And the other, it keeps track of the end of the game because however many spaces Nessie moves, it's how many spaces she moves along the victory track. So if she's going 14, 15 quickly, it gets around. And as soon as she hits the 65 points on the track, end game of the game. Over. One of the optional rules, too, I think, is uh, when Nessie gets to, what is that? The anywhere? auction spots. Any the auction, the auction spot. spots. You, uh, you'll get to auction for... Your five-pointer. Yes, your five-pointer. Your, your fourth camera, yeah. Yeah, your fourth camera there. And how's the bidding work? The bidding, you bid the numbers that you have in your hand. You put down that how, how much you have. But once you've got your camera... If you won the bid, you cannot participate in later bids. Yeah. So everybody's going to get a chance to get their camera if that gets there. But sometimes yeah. Nessie will go so fast that she gets past two or three bidding, two or three biddings at once. Yeah, you only, you only get once. one. Yep. And getting it earlier, the better. Perhaps not all of you know yet, but we have a second show, the Gamers Table Independent Edition, where we review independent games. And maybe you're thinking, ah, I don't know if I want to watch that because the independent games really don't interest me all that much. You might be surprised. We've had There's some stuff that have been really good that worth buying. Definitely worth yep. buying. Oh, yes. And uh, that the uh, independent show is actually Power being... and glory. The independent show is actually being sponsored by The Game Crafter, who is one of the companies that produces the independent games. So, you should check that show out. Anyway, this is from the guys at The Game Crafter. And it is. Our audience appears to love your show. There have been, there have been comments on how to improve it. Some comments. Of course, Typical. everything thinks that they can do everything better than those actually doing something. So I'm not sure if these are good ideas or not. You're the experts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the expert. These mm. the guys. <laughs> okay, first one. Craig is the only one that seems excited. The other two seem too mellow. I mean, the guys who read. <laughs> Talk above a whisper half the time. Why? Uh, uh. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that's for them to liven up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wish they used a video of them playing the game as B-roll while they were talking, or at least some photos of them playing it. Okay, two problems with that. First, game footage of people playing a board game is boring. Boring. Unless you're actually playing the game, it's horrible because you wouldn't get good sound and you wouldn't be able to tell what's going on. You'd just be able to see people yelling and laughing and throwing cards and stuff at each other because, you know. Because that's how we play though, games. We throw cards at yeah. each other. And the, oh, yeah. the other reason, then, <laughs> having pictures of the game as we're playing it, unfortunately, we're all playing the game. So there's nobody to standard. You know, we don't have a, a crew. There's nobody manning the camera over there to take pictures for us. Well, like, a, do, you, do you have a camera? Yeah. Okay, well, you just... Have it out on Wednesday or so, something so and snap Ken's, a couple of shots. Ken's going to be taking pictures from now on. So if there are no pictures, you blame Ken. Fine, fine. <laughs> um, whatever, I could bring my camera or you just use yours? Yeah, we can bring it out. Just got to remember whatever, to do it. Just take some pictures. Yes, yeah, so I've actually put it in suggested that myself then. before. Yeah. Take some pictures of the games while they're being played. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot but, of times yeah, when just, the review is getting done, it's a month or two after we've played the games last and there is no We just got to remember to actually have a camera out while we're playing games. Yeah, and I guess this one's uh, linking to it. I wish they showed the game laid out on a table ready to be played. It's the same sort of thing. If we remember to have the camera there and take pictures. So for the next few, you're still not going to see that, but maybe after that. Some good suggestions. Yeah. And I get the feeling that Ken doesn't like indie games. Or at least he is the harshest critic of the three. <laughs> Well, I rate the games just the same as any other game. It doesn't matter who produces them or anything like that. If uh, I find there's flaws with them, or if I don't find them as exciting as other games I've played, I'll rate them accordingly. That's Maybe I'm harsh, I don't know, but it's not that they're independent or anything like that. A game's a game. Well, I, I'll put my feedback in it. You're probably the more artsier type amongst us, so we can look at a game. You know, this is probably not... If it, the game was published, it would... 
the artwork would be a little bit better. The figures it's would be better. It's not just the artwork, it's the gameplay. Well, the, yeah, the but I'm just, just saying that's one thing that I game. know that's... Well, artwork helps the sell the game. The look of it. I know tough. you don't have the, the, what do you call it, the the money... The budget. The yeah. budget or whatever for it, but, uh, you know, it's independent. I don't expect a lot out of that, you know, but still, production helps to sell, help to sell the game. But, but I, that's I, not the big thing. That's not the big reason no. why... I, if I give something a low score, it's because of just the artwork. I would say the biggest thing on independent games for myself is it's a really big difference. We don't have many of the independent games that, you know, that was all right, not great. It's like, that was a really good game, or like, ugh. Yeah, there's no real middle ground mm -hmm, with the no. independent we find. We, we either really like it or we really don't. Yeah. There haven't been too many right in the middle or anything like that. I, some of them, like... I, I mentioned earlier, Power and Glory. I really enjoy that one. That's probably been my favorite independent game that we've gotten so far. You know, th there's two. Power and Glory for an in-depth, longer strategy type game. Mm -hmm. Holder of Secrets for a and quick Holder game. Holder of Secrets, awesome. yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. But then, so so was Mall Frenzy. A really Mall good Frenzy's, yeah, lighter Mall game. Mall Frenzy's pretty good. Actually, that one is probably one for me that is just a little, little bit above average, but, uh, you know, not quite really good or really bad or anything. And the last one on here. Audio quality. The audio is really low on some of their videos. Audio quality is really low on some of them. That's because we don't speak up loud enough. Actually, the funny thing about you is here, you do. In your close-ups, you're so damn quiet they can hardly hear a thing you're saying. <laughs> and me, I just start trailing off, you know, when I don't know what I want to say. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, no. the less confident Ken is about the game, the less if, he mumbles. Oh, if he... I don't know the game that well, or if I haven't played it in a while and I don't quite remember all the details, or if I haven't played it enough to really get a good handle on the game, if I don't think we've played it enough to get a good, you know, try different strategies or something like that, I might not have as much to say about it and I'll get quiet. There you go. So, thanks for the feedback anyway, you know. Yeah, talk to Ken about something he yep. is familiar with and likes to talk about and yeah try to get a word in watch the yeah. bsg episode <laughs> <laughs> wrapping up for loch ness loch ness what's loch -ness. your store hey, give it an eight i like the game it's a lot of fun i enjoy it i think it's well put together it doesn't take too long and i like a good variety of uh, games as far as you know time and uh, options you know different uh, depths of strategy and stuff but for a good um, middle ground game for family and experienced gamers, I think it's very good. I give Loch Ness a 7. For me, there's not a whole lot of screw you factor in this game, which is a little bit... It, it's a fun game, but it's certainly not one I'd want to play all the time. No, myself. I, I, know, I enjoy still, it. Still, I give Loch Ness a 7. The theme is there, which you all know I like theme on, on games. Mm -hmm. um, fairly easy to teach somebody how to play. Yep. And, and can be fun, but it's just... it's a less challenging game. It's more middle yeah. of the road. So yeah, I think 7 was going to do it. That's it for this episode of The Gamer's Table. Tune in next week for another episode and another game. Thanks for watching. to give this one uh ooh. what I, 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 is that supposed to be i don't know i'm just goofing around there that's all i'm just thinking out loud right that's yeah. one See, game like, stop over. There we like go. you guys say something you don't say a damn word well, <laughs> <that's not laughs> stop. fine Good speak brief. up let it <laughs>
want more information, go to www.kgbcon.com. KGBCon, KGBCon, KGBCon. You can go there and meet maybe somebody from the gamer table. It's a Saturday, I'll go. And it, it's in May, so I might be working at the market, so you, I might not be able to go, you, so I can't You may be it. working, you don't know. That is correct. <laughs> anyways. 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 anyways.